A European Union embargo on Russian oil exports by sea is coming into force. The West is hoping to squeeze Moscow's ability to wage war in Ukraine, but the measures have been greeted with disdain by the Kremlin. A $60 a barrel cap on the price of Russian crude shipped elsewhere also takes effect today. It was agreed on Friday by the EU, the G7, group of wealthy nations and Australia. But President Zelensky says the cap will not be viewed as a serious decision in Moscow. Here he is speaking on Saturday. It is quite comfortable for the budget of a terrorist state. Russia has already caused colossal losses to all countries of the world by deliberately destabilizing the energy market. And the world cannot dare to trigger its real energy disarmament. This is a weak position, and it's only a matter of time before stronger tools will have to be used anyway. Our news correspondent Jessica Parker has the latest on how Kyiv is taking the news and also the implications for Russia. Kyiv not remotely impressed, I think, with that cap. Uh, too close to kind of the current prices that Russian oil has been trading around. And I think it's important to say the intention here set by the, the G7, uh, the EU, Australia, I don't think the intention is to stop Russian oil flowing into global markets. Uh, the fear, if they did that, if they set the cap too low, is that you could then see a price spike affecting the global economy. But it is an attempt to limit uh, Russia's revenues from oil. Why? Well, then that eats into the Kremlin's coffers and eats into their ability, in theory, to finance this war. But, as you've heard from President Zelensky there, and indeed some people within the EU, for example, Poland, Baltic nations, uh, they've been arguing for these lower caps because they think that it really isn't going far enough. I think it's interesting to note that it seems to be something that will be under discussion again and again as they review this cap, depending on what happens on the oil markets. But, of course, as I say, the intention, the hope seems to be that it will cut into Russia's revenues one way or another. Of course, they have other markets that they can go to, such as China, for example. But some analysts speculating, well... Those countries still buying uh, Russian oil, even if they're not signing up to the cap, they will have greater bargaining power because they can say, along with that EU embargo, partial embargo on Russian oil, they can say, well, you can't sell your oil to large parts of Europe. And as well, there's this uh, cap set as well by countries that have quite a large portion of the global shipping uh, market. So we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. A lot of people saying at the moment... They can't quite tell, they can't quite know exactly what the impact will be. But, of course, it is a pretty big major intervention happening today. And how would you put this then, just kind of in the larger picture when we look at the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia? Um, some talking about maybe even a decrease in activity in the coming months, uh, some US officials. Um, and I don't know, I, I, they're obviously making some of these decisions and looking forward into... Uh, the winter, which can be the most difficult time. Yes, yeah, so we've heard some rather contradictory suggestions actually over the last couple of days in terms of what might happen over the winter months. Avril Haines, a very senior US intelligence official, saying over the weekend at a defence forum that her expectation was you could see the fighting slow down over the winter and that both sides might look to prepare a kind of offensive campaign around the spring. But then other Western analysts saying, well, no, actually... What you might get instead is as the ground hardens, uh, you get the kind of winter freeze. That's actually a more favourable condition, particularly for kind of tracked vehicles to cross uh, terrain. And certainly Ukrainian officials uh, and people in the Ukrainian military pretty keen to suggest that they don't plan on slowing anything down. Of course, what Ukraine wants to show is that it still has momentum. Of course, not so long ago, it recaptured her son after the Russian retreat. And I think that Ukraine will want to send a message to those backing it as well in terms of money, in terms of arms, that it is going to keep fighting and that it wants to keep securing victories. Thanks to Jess Parker.